This video will help you understand shading. I always get people reaching out to me asking me questions about some crazy shading problems they're running into on their mesh, and the truth is, these questions wouldn't exist if Blender users knew why the shading was occurring in the first place. And that's what this video is gonna be all about. Now, before we get started, we have a brand new free training available on blenderbros.com called The Nine Secrets to Surpassing 90% of your 3D competition in just 30 minutes. I'd highly recommend checking out this training because no, it's not BS. It has some super practical information in there that will literally rewire the way you think when you're designing in Blender. You can check it out over on blenderbros.com webinar or visit the link in the description. Okay, so shading. Before I can help you understand what shading is, we need to break down the three basic types of topology triangles, quads, and n-gons. Now, since most of you on my channel are familiar with Blender, I probably don't need to explain these three, but just in case, a triangle has three sides, a quad has four, and n-gons have more than four sides. That's it. Now, triangles, quads, and n-gons operate quite differently. Let's take a look. The first thing you need to understand is that triangles cannot bend. It is impossible to bend a triangle in 3D software, topologically speaking. Since I can only move three vertices on a triangle, no matter which way I move them, the triangle will never bend. It will always be completely flat. Give it a try for yourself. You'll see that no matter which way you move the triangle, it is always going to be flat. Now the same cannot be said for quads. You see, quads have four vertices, and if I move just one of them, the quad will bend. Now watch what happens when I bend the quad. The shading goes absolutely crazy. The more I bend the quad, the more crazy the shading gets. This is a fundamental reason shading issues occur, so make sure you remember this. Now finally, what about n-gons? Well, the same exact thing happens with n-gons. If I bend the n-gon, the shading will go crazy, usually much crazier than a bent quad. So in summary, you can't bend triangles, but you can bend quads and n-gons, and this will cause shading problems. Now that you understand the fundamentals of shading problems, let me give you a practical example. Let's take the cylinder. A cylinder is simply made up of a set of faces repeated around 360 degrees. So what happens if we bend one of the faces on the cylinder? Well, now that you know what happens when we bend certain types of topology, you should already know what will happen. We'll get a massive shading issue. The more I bend the face on the cylinder, the more distorted it gets. And this is one of the reasons I always say in my videos, keep the curvature even and consistent, otherwise you'll get shading issues. Now this brings us to the next topic of booleans. Booleans, as most of you know, can be the kings of shading problems. So let's go all out and run a boolean into a sphere. Okay, once we've ran the boolean in the sphere, let's apply the boolean and take a look at the topology. Notice in the areas where the boolean was added, the boolean created n-gons. The n-gon isn't the issue here, contrary to popular belief. The issue is the n-gon is technically bent from the boolean, which is causing weird distortions and shading errors. This is why I always tend to laugh when people say n-gons cause shading issues without actually understanding what they're saying. It's not the n-gon that's at fault, it's the fact that the n-gon is bent and the same issues can happen with quads. You can have a flat surface with terrible topology yet still have clean shading, while you can have a quad which is considered clean topology yet still have terrible shading. I hope this is beginning to make sense. There are plenty of other situations I haven't discussed in this video such as using subdivision surface modifiers, in which case even if your n-gons aren't bent you still might have some weird issues. But the goal of this video was to demonstrate why shading issues tend to occur in our usual hard surface modeling workflow, so that way you understand and can diagnose the problem in the future and have an easier time fixing it. This is another reason I always recommend isolating the shading as opposed to fixing it completely, because fixing the topology in such a way that it isn't bent might not even be possible without complete retopology. I hope this video made sense and gave you a better understanding of shading problems, why they occur, and how you can fix them. I know shading can be tricky, I struggle with it as well, but I hope this video helped alleviate some of that frustration. So hope the video helped. Check out our free training in the description. I think you'll get a lot of value out of that one and I'll see you in the next video.